the dark web, exploring the depths of the internet's underbelly. The portion of the web that is visible is just the tip of the iceberg according to Anand Rajaraman, co-founder of the search engine Cosmix, which operates on the deep web, DW. The CEO of Amazon, Jeff Bezos, is also an investor in the company Cosmix, which he founded. Yet, Rajaraman seems to know what he's talking about regarding the iceberg, even though it sounds intimidating. How is it possible that everything that we know about the internet is simply a very small piece of it? The deep web is the portion of the internet that is not publicly accessible. To explain it more simply, it is the portion of the world wide web that cannot be indexed by search engines. It is a location that Google does not visit. Therefore, it is referred to as the dark web, which has restricted access. According to Alfonso A. Kajaya Muaz, a security researcher at McAfee Chile, the DW is made up of enormous amounts of information that have been placed online but for technological reasons has not been categorized or updated by search engines. According to several studies, the deep web constitutes approximately 90% of the total internet. Those who have been using the internet since its infancy, when there were no search engines or online portals, will find that exploring the deep web is like being transported back in time. It is difficult to find what you are looking for, you need more than a passing knowledge of computer science, and you will need to write down the exact addresses of the sites you manage to find, and stock them in your bookmarks, because it is not easy to remember pages with URLs like sddedohiidmomian.onion. This is because it is difficult to find what you are looking for, and it requires more than a passing knowledge of computer science, the usual format in this territory. When it first emerged in 1994, the deep web was referred to as the hidden web. It was rechristened the deep web in the year 2001 says Kajaya Munoz. Yet, there are many who hold the opinion that the beginning of the deep web can be traced back to the 1990s when onion routing was originally developed by the United States Naval Research Laboratory, which was the initial step towards the Tor project. The primary entry point to the deep web is known as Tor, which is an abbreviation for the onion router. It distributes the user's information to a large network of volunteer servers located in different parts of the world after first encrypting it in layers, similar to those of an onion. Because of this method, it is nearly hard to keep track of users or the information they share. The deep web, which provides users with anonymity and freedom, has evolved over the years into a vast, almost inhospitable, and little explored information repository. This repository has the potential to host content ranging from the kindest and most reasonable to the cruelest and most incomprehensible. Documents in forms that cannot be indexed, such as encyclopedias, dictionaries, periodicals, and so on, can be found within the deep web. Moreover, the deep web contains private intranets that are protected with passwords. Yet that is not the end of it. A dark abyss. According to Satnam Narong, manager of Symantec Security Response, the fact that the deep web is concealed from view makes it an exceptionally appealing location for illegal activity. A large number of cyber criminals congregate in locations like private forums that only certain people can access. There are a lot of people who are already familiar with the seedier side of the internet, such as how to download music without paying for it, where to see the newest movies without paying for them, or how to get prescription medicines for a little more money. Yet, the deep web reaches far further. A distance that is almost inconceivably greater. The deep web is home to a wide variety of illegal goods and services, including child pornography, drug trafficking, terrorism, hired assassins, prostitutes, and arms trafficking, to name just a few. According to Dmitry Bestuzov, the director of the team of analysts at Kaspersky Lab, on the deep web, you can find sites that sell stolen credit cards, teams that will clone credit cards through ATMs, people selling cocaine, and more. On the deep web, you can find sites that sell stolen credit cards, teams that will clone credit cards through ATMs, and more. Not all uses of the sites on the deep web can be classified as bad. Those who feel that their liberties are being infringed upon or who are the subject of surveillance by government authorities have also found it to be of great assistance. One of the applications of the deep web is demonstrated by the website WikiLeaks. Before it was made available to the general public, the WikiLeaks website was initially and for a considerable amount of time run on the deep web. Even in this day and age, 
it is still possible for someone who wants to leak material to WikiLeaks or blow the whistle on anything to publish it on the deep web. Another illustration of this is the collective known as Anonymous, which has utilized Tor to orchestrate major attacks on a variety of organizations. Not only does it conduct its direct operations over the dark web, but it also uses it for internal organization. Unsurprisingly, it did not take very long at all before various government agencies tasked with maintaining national security became aware of this kind of network. How could they possibly allow groups to function freely without restricting their activities in any way? Silk Road, a hidden marketplace on the internet where various types of illegal substances can be bought and sold, is one of the clearest instances. It is estimated that Silk Road produces more than $22 million per year and law enforcement agencies all over the world are working feverishly to devise methods that will put a halt to the traffic on the website. The Australian Federal Police and the Australian Customs and Border Protection Agency have just recently begun working together on a cooperative operation to monitor and potentially disrupt Silk Road transactions. The Border Mail newspaper was informed by the agency that since September 5th, detectives have seized over 30 packets containing approximately 0.5 kilograms of cannabis, approximately 200 grams of synthetic cannabis, approximately 5 grams of methamphetamine, approximately 1 gram of cocaine, approximately 400 tabs of LSD, and approximately 30 tablets of ecstasy. It was claimed in April that the United States Drug Enforcement Administration DA, had initiated action against drug trafficking on the deep web. The fact that the transactions can be snooped on is a difficulty, but the fact that dismantling the network or following the users presents an almost insurmountable challenge. There have already been efforts made to control and manage the deep web in Tor. The government of Ethiopia has announced that it has implemented security systems that block access to Tor in Ethiopia to prevent illicit activities and Skype connections, both of which are regulated in that country. The efficiency of that technological advancement is still unknown. One section of the Stop Online Piracy Act SOPA, bill went largely unnoticed amidst the whirlwind of protests and publicity surrounding the proposed SOPA bill Stop Online Piracy Act last year. That section of the bill could make it illegal to distribute Tor and other software that can circumvent attempts by the United States government to block pirated websites. This is something that has Tor users very concerned. But the government and the police are concerned about more than just eliminating or limiting access to these networks. The National Security Agency NSA, of the United States allegedly has plans to employ them for cyber espionage, as reported by Wired. According to a report that was published by the Defense Science Board in 2010, the deep web contains government publications, databases, and other sources of material of significant value to the Department of Defense and the intelligence community. Finding and indexing information in the deep web requires the use of supplementary technologies. The intelligence community feels most at ease when they are engaged in activities that include the theft of sensitive information from a possible opponent. How is the video? Do you enjoy it? Tell us in our comments section below and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more updates.